Anzac Day 2021. Streaming from Melbourne's Shrine of Remembrance, good morning and welcome in joining us to walk in the footsteps of the Anzacs. Australians, the so-called carefree jokers of yesteryear's Anzacs, character traits that are ever-present in today's service personnel. World War I Gallipoli to the Western Front, World War II global battle-torn landscapes to Korea, Vietnam, Somalia, Iraq, Afghanistan, and wherever Australia's men and women serve, with whom the Anzac spirit of selfless courage and sacrifice, supporting communities savaged by terror, lives to this day. This year, due to health regulations, the Anzac Dawn service is streaming live in remembrance of bravery and sacrifice mateships. To honour loved ones gone and loved ones serving, to honour mateships, drawn by our antenna of love and respect that activates our moral compass to this Anzac commemoration from the Shrine of Remembrance. Peter Meehan, with the prelude to the Anzac Dawn Service, the Stand 2 Dawn Service that will commence at 6am. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we are gathered. We pay our respects to their elders, past, present and future, and elders from other communities who are amongst us today. The Anzac Dawn Service coming to you from this spiritual cathedral where we commemorate a generation of Australians lost in World War I, the Great War, 1914-18, that left Australia battered and bruised. 61,000 Australians killed, one third of whom were Victorian. We remember the 25,000 Anzacs hospitalised and shocked into silence, 10 years after the Great War, and the 50,000 Anzacs who were hospitalised 20 years after the Great War. The experiences of our Anzacs have become echoes recorded in our nation's memory from the fog of war in France and Belgium. There is no spot on the whole of the tortured soil of France which is more associated with Australian history, both in unimaginable loss and the triumph of Australian soldiers than Villa Bretonneur. May we also never forget the millions of lost souls in Europe brutalised by the scourge of war. May we always honour and reflect on those who served and gave their lives in all wars, conflicts and peacekeeping operations. <coughs> Thoughts also go with the Australian servicemen and women presently in harm's way, mentoring and assisting civilian rehabilitation, giving children, families and the elderly hope. Let us shoulder those who struggle with their emotions. We remember Vietnam War diggers, uh, regulars and conscripts killed in the savagery of that war. This year marks the 51st anniversary of Operation Hammersley, when in 1970, C Company, Royal Australian Regiment, deployed to Long High, South Vietnam, uh, to protect quarry operations being undertaken by 17 Squadron. Nine platoon met a fiercely aggressive enemy in difficult and exhausting terrain, and heavy losses resulted on both sides. Courageous actions by the Australian and New Zealanders at Long High proved successful, however, at a cost of significant casualties. And may we care for those who suffer under the weight of lost family members. And so to reflections of World War II. We remember Australian losses after Rabaul fell to the Japanese, fought on the island of New Britain in the Australian territory of New Guinea and the fall of Singapore. 7,000 Australian soldiers, sailors and airmen died during the New Guinea campaign. We remember Australians and our nation's allies during the World War II Western Desert campaigns. Months of continuous bravery and sacrifice, Alamein, Tobruk, in unforgiving landscapes. In 1945, the end of World War II, Australian Army losses, 
20,000. Royal Australian Navy losses, 2,000. We remember RAAF airmen who served in the European theatre. RAAF losses, 5,400, of which 3,500 were attached to RAF uh, Bomber Command, killed in deadly airborne brawls against a highly skilled enemy. We remember women at home that forged a national workforce, thousands of women who selflessly gave their heart and soul to that World War II capable workforce. We remember the bravery, heroics, suffering and enduring courage <coughs> pardon, of women in war, Australian nurses who served during decades of conflict and war, including present-day Australian Defence Medical Reserve personnel serving in faraway terrorised lands. We remember also those who were brutalised by war, became prisoners of war and suffered unimaginable degradation of body, mind and spirit. Should also never be denied, never be forgotten. So to a special year for the veterans of Tobruk. Tobruk, North Africa, captured by Australian and British troops 1941. This month, April 2021, marks the 80th anniversary of the siege of Tobruk when nine Australian division held out with the support of the Royal Australian Navy and Royal Australian Air Force. German propaganda likened the Tobruk defenders to rats, uh, vermin if you will. Far from being demoralised, the Australians took the name Rats of Tobruk as a badge of honour and held Tobruk for more than eight months. We remember those who fought and died on the stony desert of Tobruk, their courage and their determination. We ensure these men lying in their desert graves will never be forgotten. Now, the rats of Dubrook, who are amongst us today, here on the forecourt, or a part of the streaming service from the shrine, we're joined by Geoffrey Pullman, 2nd 12th Field Regiment, Joseph Darley, 2nd 23rd Battalion, Thomas Pritchard, 2nd 5th Field Ambulance, Victor Stone, 2nd 5th Field Ambulance, Donald Simpson, 2nd 32 Battalion, John Campbell, Light Anti-Aircraft Regiment, and Hawtrey Creek, 2nd 24th Battalion. They, today, are amongst us with their families and members of the Rats of Tobruk Association to remember the gallantry of the Australian and British soldiers. The Siege of Tobruk on this 80th anniversary this month holds a proud place in Australian military history equal to that of Gallipoli. In the battle diary of World War II Tobruk stretcher bearer, the late Johnny Rutherford of 2nd 5th Australian Field Ambulance, he wrote, we remember the plagues of flies, fleas and rats, the desert heat, freezing nights, monotony of food, chlorinated water. We remember the hell of enemy dive bombers and the desolation of the wreck-choked harbour. We remember the audacity of the Shufti plane which flew constantly over Tobruk, spotting enemy artillery. The threat of Bardia Bill, the salient Sioux, the two long-range guns that blasted the harbour and surrounding areas. And we remember the men we left behind. But above all, we remember the warm comradeship of the fighting men of Tobruk, their tenacity, their will to win, which won for them their proudest battle honour, the rats of Tobruk. So World War II Solomon Islands. May we always remember Australian bravery on the Solomon chain of islands in 1942. Battles on the Solomon Islands included Bougainville and Tulagi in the territory of New Guinea where heroism and sacrifice prevailed. Australian infantry soldiers took part in the Tulagi Beach landing. They experienced the worst of desperate hand-to-hand -hand combat and witnessed the gut-wrenching impact 
that heavy artillery had on human life. Tulagi, tough. The landscape scarred by unimaginable loss of life. Australian survivors of the Solomon chain of islands remain eternally thankful to the American land, air and sea forces that supported them and Australia in its hours of need. After the World War II New Guinea battles on the Kokoda track came the Battle of the Bismarck Sea, a turning point in enemy aggression, 1942. Pilot Terry Digan from Geelong, flying an RAAF Catalina flying boat operating north of New Guinea, located a 16-ship Japanese fleet. Digan shadowed and harassed the fleet, flying in and out of cloud while tracking and reporting the fleet's location. The following day, the RAAF joined the United States Army Air Force in neutralising the enemy fleet. The American-Australian joint attack effectively ruined Japanese reinforcement of Ley and their target, Port Moresby, to ultimately annex Australia. The uh, Korean War, often referred to as the well, Forgotten War, let us reflect on 18,000 Australians sent to the Korean Peninsula between 1950 and 1953 to fight in the unwinnable Korean War. The war which claimed 3 million lives, including 340 Australians, many of whom rest in the Busan Cemetery on the Korean Peninsula. This is the prelude to Stand Do Dawn Service. The Stand Do Dawn Service will commence at six. So to this year, 2021, a year of significance for our nation, members of the Royal Australian Air Force, and the people they serve. The World War I Australian Flying Corps morphed into today's Royal Australian Air Force in 1921. 2021 marks the centenary of our nation's air arm. Air Force is a first responder to bushfire ravaged reasons, floods and evacuations at home and abroad. And Air Force capability is a well-trained potent enemy deterrent operating with sophisticated world-class technology and highly trained people, people being the most important asset. History of Air Force in Tenery <laughs> records are uh, steeped in almost endless stories of achievement, remarkable actions, heroic sacrifice. From the RAAF centenary file of these seemingly endless stories of bravery, selfless courage, bravery under fire, comes the story of the late Air Force Warrant Officer John Snowy Coglan. Now, in 1967, Coglan was a crewman aboard a nine squadron Iroquois helicopter in Vietnam that was tasked to assist a US helicopter which had crashed in enemy territory. Arriving at the crash site, they found the American helicopter in flames with its onboard ammunition exploding in all directions. Disregarding danger, Snowy Coglin volunteered to be winched down to the crash site and rescue the badly hurt US crew. He immediately secured three personnel lying around the burning helicopter, then returned via winch to rescue the other members, all of whom were dazed, burnt and wandering in jungle growth. They too, with Coglin, were winched to safety by the RAAF crew in amongst a continuous cacophony of exploding ammunition. Australian Airman Warrant Officer John Snowy Coglin was awarded the Conspicuous Gallantry Medal, the award second only to the Victoria Cross. So the Pacific War, again from the centenary of Air Force files, Numerous stories. Here's one. May we never forget 
the bravery and sacrifice of thousands of Australian World War II pilots and crews. Australian fighter pilot Ace Clive Caldwell served in North Africa, Syria, Lebanon, Southwest Pacific and the New Guinea campaign. Flying P-40 Warhawk, Kitty Hawk and Spitfire aircraft, Caldwell accounted for 28 enemy aircraft in more than 300 operational sorties. During the Pacific War, he accounted for more than 22 enemy aircraft. In his world, it was do or die in the skies above foreign lands, courage during deadly aerial combat, likened to barroom brawls, if you will, committed to the task from which Air Force camaraderie grew, in turn enabled operational teamwork to grow. Centenary of Air Force <clears throat> proudly boasts pride, capability and strength in the people of our nation's air arm. So to a, another page, RAAF Centenary Bomber Command, United Kingdom. We remember and pay tribute to the thousands of young Australian airmen who served with RAF Bomber Command, 3,486 blasted from the skies over World War II Europe, average age of Australian crews 24 years. Today the veterans are few. Those remaining are united in voice. We only survive by not being in the wrong place at the wrong time. It's a very familiar echo. Blokes like Laurie Farmer. Laurie Lama is almost 100. He's from Newmarket originally, flying Halifax bombers. Also, Lancaster pilot at 103 years is listening this morning, Arthur Atkins. He's off cue, lives, drives his car, lives comfortably. He's another. Arthur Atkins is with us and he's listening via the streaming service. From 1943 to 1945, talking about Australian pilots, Don McDonald is another. Now, McDonald, he flew 41 missions, operational missions, in the Halifax bombers over enemy territory. He lives in Box Hill today. During our most recent chat, he raised the sadness of lost crew members. On return to base after each sortie, he was off to sleeping quarters. There were always empty bunks occupied by crewmates the night before. Such loss, but no time to dwell. The job was on again next day. In this centenary of RAAF, we remember all who served in war, conflict and peacekeeping. 100 years of mateships can never be underestimated, often formed in the crucible of combat amid the stress and terror, high in the sunlit silence, unbreakable bonds were formed. Bonds that uh, enabled, say, men of Bomber Command to depart next day and face danger, or give resolve to the fighter pilots of 75 Squadron in their heroic and tenacious defence of Port Moresby fueled the raw courage of nine squadron helicopter crews during perilous aeromedical evacuations of Australian soldiers in Vietnam. 2021 Air Force Centenary is about 100 years of service, fighting and caring about the person next to you, putting yourself on the line. As Australian Flying Officer retired Laurie Wood said, as a veteran of 30 operational missions over Europe, he put it so simply, we wouldn't let any of our crew down. He said in his most recent chat, any one of us would have given our lives to save our crew. They were more to us than our own flesh and blood. We pay tribute and remember to all who paid the ultimate sacrifice, and to those who suffer from their wartime experiences. 
Would the official party uh, please be upstanding as we are united this morning in remembrance, as we light up the dawn together right across Victoria and Australia. The Stand to Anzac Dawn service is about to commence. May silent contemplation be your offering. Dr. Robert Webster, State President, RSL Victoria, to recite the ode. They went with songs to the battle. They were young, straight of limb, true of eye, steady and aglow. They were staunch to the end against odds uncounted. They fell with their faces to the foe. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. lest we forget.
Stand down. The official party may now be seated. Her Excellency the Honourable Linda Dassault, Governor of Victoria, will present her Anzac Day Address. Let me start by acknowledging the Honourable James Molino, Acting Premier, Senator the Honourable Jane Hume, representing the Prime Minister, Captain Peter Crutchley, representing the New Zealand High Commissioner, the Honourable Michael O'Brien, Leader of the Opposition, the Right Honourable the Lord Mayor of Melbourne, Councillor Sally Capp, Major General Andrew Bottrell, Senior Army Officer, Victoria, Commodore Greg York, Senior Naval Officer, Victoria, and Air Commodore Greg Frasina, Senior Air Force Officer of Victoria. Chief Commissioner Shane Patton, Victoria Police. Dr Robert Webster, State President of the RSL Victoria. Captain Stephen Bowater, Chairman of the Shrine of Remembrance Trustees. Our speakers today, Major General Emeritus Professor Geoffrey Rosenfeld and Mr Angus Mur Murray, and all the distinguished guests gathered here today. Can I also start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land upon which we're gathering and by paying my respects to their elders past and present and to elders who are here with us this morning. Well, in the galleries of our shrine, photographs and names of some of those who landed on the Gallipoli Peninsula more than a century ago today scroll through on a loop. Amongst them, Sergeant Leslie Starr, 22 years, school teacher. Private Harry Barrett, 18 years, plate glass worker. Lance Corporal Ken Sutherland, 20 years, carrier. And Private Arthur South, 19 years, boiler maker. The loop and the list scrolls on. As we gather in the cool dawn this morning, whether here, at cenotaphs dotted around our state, or in our driveways, we think of them and the 16,000 members of the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps, who full of patriotism and anticipation had left their home shores to find themselves early on that April morning, travelling through darkness as their boats disgorged them into an impossibly inhospitable landscape of rugged spurs and gullies, there to be met by devastating bombardments. That evening, looking at his battalion waiting to go ashore, signaller Ellis Silas confided in his diary, for the last time in this world, many of us stand shoulder to shoulder. As I look down the ranks of my comrades, I wonder which of us are marked for the land beyond. Sadly, many of them were so marked. By the end of just that first day of the landing, 2,000 lay dead or wounded. One year later, reflecting on that day, 23-year-old Vera Deacon, daughter of our second Prime Minister, wrote to her parents from her Red Cross posting in Cairo. Today is the anniversary of the heroic landing, the day which plunged half the world into admiration and awe and half our continent into sorrow and mourning. It was an apt description. There was much to admire and so many to mourn, and there has been since. We admire the valour and we mourn the loss of those who fought on at Gallipoli and throughout World War I, those who several decades later battled to fight back invading armies to save French and Belgian villages or to stave off threats in the Pacific, or later again in jungles in Vietnam and since in deserts and wherever and whenever they've been called upon to fight or to keep the peace. In those scrolling names in the gallery here and etched into monuments in every corner of our country, we see a snapshot of their particular time in history. But it is in fact a snapshot of us all. Those from our biggest cities and our smallest towns, from our First Nations and those more recently arrived, from every walk of life, 
much loved members of families, workplaces, teams and clubs and congregations. Each Anzac Day we gather to remember. We know that our remembering will not bring back those who died in the course of duty. It won't erase the pain of grieving families or sufficiently lighten the burden for those who were injured. But we remember because they've gifted us a legacy. Their legacy is the character of our nation, forged from their service. Exactly 50 years ago, speaking in Canberra on the 50th anniversary of the Royal Australian Air Force, when he too was in his 50th year, His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh spoke of service, citing amongst the crucial factors courage, endurance and leadership, and concluding that in the end it is this human content which is decisive in both peace and war. In the Anzacs, we saw that human content. That is their legacy. The years pass, but not the lessons, lest we forget. Thank you, Governor. The Anzac Day Veterans Address will be <coughs> pardon, presented by Major General Geoffrey Rosenfeld. Major General Rosenfeld is a distinguished Australian military surgeon. He was Surgeon General, Australian Defence Force Reserves, 2009 to 2011, and was Chief Defence Human Ethics Committee Chair from 2012 to 2015. He joined the Army Reserve in 1984 as a medical officer posted to 6th Field Ambulance. He is deployed on eight Australian Defence Force deployments, including Rwanda, East Timor, Bougainville, Solomon Islands and Iraq. He was awarded the Geoffrey Harkness Medal in 2001 for outstanding contribution to the Royal Australian Army Medical Corps. He's been awarded the International Award for Excellence in Military Surgery, the United States Air Force Commendation Medal for his service during the Battle for Fallujah, 2007, and the US Armed Forces Meritorious Service Medal for service during the Battle of Mosul, 2017. Major General Professor Rosenfeld is an international expert on military trauma, particularly blast and penetration injury to the head and brain. He is currently senior neurosurgeon, Alfred Hospital, Emeritus Professor of Surgery, Monash University. Major General, Professor Rosenfeld. Thank you. Your Excellency, Dr. Webster, distinguished guests, veterans, serving members of the Australian Defence Force, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Today we commemorate the courage and sacrifice of all Australians who have served in war. Let us remember the Australian soldiers landing on the shores of Gallipoli in the early hours of the morning of the 25th of April 1915, being attacked by sustained machine gun fire At the end of that fateful day, 2,000 Anzacs lay dead. Let us remember the Australian soldiers on the Western Front (coughs) advancing on the enemy and being struck down by machine gun fire. Our stretcher bearers going into no man's land in the dead of night to find the wounded on the battlefield, comfort them and bring them back to safety and medical care. I acknowledge the highly trained combat medics of today who treat our injured soldiers whilst under fire and have saved many lives. I think of the severely injured soldiers I operated on in Iraq. It is the greatest privilege for me to have cared for our soldiers and those of our allies during war. I think of our prisoners of war at Hellfire Pass on the Burma Thai Railway and contemplate what they endured I think of the superb efforts of Sir Edward Weary Dunlop and his fellow doctors to look after the malnourished and sick prisoners of war with virtually no equipment or supplies. Let us remember our brave pilots who flew many missions over Germany in World War II, not knowing if they would ever return. 
Indeed, one third of the Australian, Australians flying in Bomber Command did not return. Flight Officer Colin Flockhart wrote to his parents to be sent in the event of his death. And I'll just read an extract from his letter, which is very poignant. I could never have been content unless I did my share. I want you to know, therefore, that if I should die, I shall not be afraid because my heart is at ease. His Lancaster was lost over France, killing all aboard. Let us also remember the many sailors of the Australian Navy who went down with their ships. And let us also remember the 41 Australian soldiers who were killed in, a, in the Afghanistan war and the more than 200 Australians who were seriously injured. We are all the custodians of this history and the precious memories. We bear a responsibility to those who served our nation to preserve their legacy and to commemorate it annually. I am pleased to see the increasing engagement of young Australians in Anzac Day commemorations. This remembrance of our history forged in battle will make us all stronger as a nation in order to resist the forces of tyranny and terror that continue to threaten our way of life and other democracies around the world. We should never take for granted the defence of our nation. Let us remember what all Australian soldiers, sailors and airmen have sacrificed to allow Australia to grow in peace and prosperity as a vibrant multicultural democracy. We are grateful and humbled by your service. Finally, let us remember the men and women who have paid the ultimate sacrifice in wars past. May they rest in peace, lest we forget. Thank you, Major General Rosenfeld. The poem in Flanders Fields by Colonel John McRae will be recited this morning by Shrine Young Ambassador, Mr. Angus Murray. In Flanders Fields, Colonel John McRae. In Flanders Fields, the poppies grow between the crosses, row on row that mark our place. And in the sky, the lark still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunsets glow, loved and were loved. And now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Thank you, Angus. The Melbourne Symphony Orchestra Chorus, led by Chorus Master Warren Travella Jones, uh, present Be Still My Soul. Thank you.
Will the official party please be upstanding? The Australian Army Band, Melbourne, and the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra Chorus present the national anthems of New Zealand and Australia.
With the official party please about face. The official party will now move to the sanctuary in the Shrine of Remembrance, where the governor will lay a wreath at the Stone of Remembrance on behalf of all Victorians. Other members of the official party are carrying symbolic red poppies, which will be laid at the stone as well. As the official party make their way inside the shrine, the red poppy, symbolic of Remembrance Day, you will have noticed has now permeated in recent years all services honouring veterans. The red poppies were the first flowers to grow in the spring in Flanders and across the battle-scarred landscape of the Western Front during the First World War. Imagine the heavy artillery, the water table shifting, landscape completely reconfigured, yet the red poppies grew. The poppy became a sign of life, a sign of giving, and to all, a sign that there was going to be a future. It will take a few moments for the official party to fully assemble and the Governor will be in position then to lay a wreath on this Anzac Day dawn service on behalf of all Australians. Will the Shrine Guard please take post? Her Excellency the Governor prepares to move forward to the Stone of Remembrance. The Governor now laying a wreath on behalf of all the Victorians.
The Governor will now depart the Shrine of Remembrance and in a few moments the Australian Army Band Melbourne with pipers under the command of Warrant Officer Colin Hugh Smith will present the 2021 Dawn Service Battle Hymn and the pipers this morning are Pipe Major Ben Casey, Captain Rupert Vickery, Lance Corporal Jess Jeffries. They'll perform Sands of Kuwait and as they perform, the official party will lay their poppies at the Stone of Remembrance as they follow the Governor's departure. Army Band, Pipers. Thank you, the Australian Army Band and the 5th, 6th Royal Victoria Regiment. Now that almost concludes the Anzac Day Dawn Service for 2021. If you care to stay assembled for the next couple of minutes, Pipe Major Ben Casey will perambulate from atop the shrine playing a 100 years old World War II set of bagpipes. The bagpipes were formerly owned by Private Jim McDowell, Black Watch. Now, some history to this, as the pipe major makes his way to the top left corner as you are looking towards the shrine, the 5th 6th Royal Victoria Regiment had the pipes on display for many years. However, it was decided the 5th 6th should get the pipes professionally restored. Now, these pipes that Ben is about to play 
date back to 1892. In effect, to restore the pipes from being historic display furniture, if you will, back to their original purpose for the world to enjoy. Pipe Major Ben Casey of the 5th, 6th Royal Victoria Regiment makes his way now to the top left-hand corner of the Shrine of Remembrance. As he prepares to stand in position, it's with uh, a great deal of appreciation that the Shrine of Remembrance and the Returned and Services League thank you for being on the forecourt and registering under these conditions. And to our live streaming audience, thank you at home for joining us and joining in the commemoration and celebration, if you will, of Anzac Day Dawn Service 2021.
This morning we lit up the dawn together, united, in remembrance to all who gave. Now, for those on the Shrine Forecourt, uh, you'll shortly be invited to lay a poppy in the sanctuary. Where possible, please remain 1.5 metres. It's five feet in the old apart, if you can, as you proceed up the north stairs. If you'd like to exit the forecourt, you may do so through any of the entry points. The Shrine Visitor Centre will open at seven. Thank you again from the Shrine of Remembrance and the RSL. Peter Meehan wishing you a memorable Anzac Day of, well, reflection, honour, sacrifice, but above all, mateship. Lest we forget.